Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to observe your math class at the end of the year and agreeing to have a coaching conversation with me. Um, I would like to start off by asking you, like, what is your name, even though I know what your name is? Um, what is your name and how many years have you been teaching? Hi, my name is Nicole Hudson and I have been teaching for three years. Where do you work? What grade do you teach and how many students were in your class? I work at Meadow Lake Elementary School and I have around I had around 18 students in the 2023-2024 school year. What standards were addressed in the lesson that I observed? Um, you observed the first grade math standard 23 equal parts, halves and fourths. We addressed in this lesson the students had to partition circles, um, rectangles into like, you know, two to four equal shares or equal parts and describe the shares using words such as halves, fourths, and quarters. Um, I also wanted my students to be able to describe the whole, like as a whole, like when you put them together, how many do you need to make a whole? That's in two or four parts to share. Um, those are the things that you observed in our class. We really enjoyed your service coming. Um, this standard, it typically requires first graders to understand the basic concepts of partitioning shapes, like circles and rectangles, which I did see, into equal parts, and describing those parts using terms like halves, thirds, and fourths, although your lesson only talked about halves and fourths. Um, this standard basically, um, it lays the foundational understanding of fractions as parts of a whole. Um, are these state, national, or school district standards? Standard 23 is state, national, and a My County, Mobile County school district standard. 23 partition circles and rectangles into two and four equal shares and describes the shares using the words halves, fourths, and quarters. And using the phrase halves of, or I'm sorry, half of and quarter of, describe the holes as two or four of the shares of circles, rectangles, you know, the dimensions of fours and things of that nature. I explained that decomposing into two or more equal shares creates smaller shares of circles and rectangles. So I think I answered your question, but to reiterate, yes, it does align with the state, national, and district standards. Thank you. Um, the next question I want to ask is, do these standards serve as like a benchmark for what students should know and be able to do at um, various stages of their education or? Yes, this standard does serve as a benchmark for students where they should know and be able to understand. Okay, um, what objective did you aim to achieve with standard 23 in math? It's my students to be able to show same size shapes within a circle or within a rectangle. Um, I wanted them to identify equals and unequal shares in a circle or rectangle. I also wanted them to separate circle and rectangles into halves and describe the whole as two of the shares. And my last goal that I had for them was to separate circles and rectangles into fours and describe the whole as four of the shares. Thank you. Um, I like the way you explained that decomposing into more equal shares creates smaller portions of circles and rectangles. What sources of data were collected to provide a comprehensive view of student performance in areas needing attention? I typically use um, their test scores. That is like my 
one of my main things that I go to is their test scores, but I also use the students' work samples, my observations when I'm walking the room and I'm staying in that power zone. And I also look for the feedback from my students as that's related to their data. Okay, hey, how do you um, use the collected data? Analyze the collected data to identify um, trends, strengths, mostly their strengths and weaknesses, and the opportunities for improvement. I also use the data to make in informed decisions about instructional strategies and intervention. Okay, um, this analysis is important to me because it informs me about where you are versus where you need to be in relations to the standards. And I think overall you did a really good job. Um, which specific strategies are currently effective in meeting educational standards in your class? Um, the differentiation instructions, curriculum alignment, and the with for me is the data-driven instructions. Okay. Um, I would like to offer you a few more um strategies or resources you could use professional development technology integration collaborative learning formative assessments and parent involvement are also some effective strategies that you can use um how do you handle equity and diversity in your classroom in my classroom i ensure that all of these strategies are inclusive and catered to um, the varied needs of all of my students. Um, I wanna make sure that everybody, you know, has that understanding and we have that connection on what is needed. So these involves, and these involves adapting my teaching methods to better serve my students from different culture backgrounds with different learning abilities or just any other, other diverse needs. Thank you. Um, how do you use emerging and existing technologies to aid in meeting student learning needs? I currently use... I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I apologize. This is a glitch. So sorry. That's fine. Um, I, cur I currently use digital tools, educational software, and online resources that enhance learning experiences and accessibility for all students. Okay. I would like to continue to provide support and feedback to you to help you with adjusting and refining your approaches based on the effective observed Effectiveness, I'm sorry, observed in student performance and engagement. Um, do you have any questions for me? Not at this time. Thank you. <laughs> Overall, I really appreciate how you explain the concepts of haves and fourths with clear examples and visuals when I was in there. Your teaching has helped your students understand the topic better. Thanks to your clear explanations, your students are much more confident about fractions now. I appreciate you for having this conversation with me. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Bye. Bye.